I make this a very important lecture class because I think this is very underestimated. And I argue for each and every one of you to write in your books why you should write with a pencil, pen, or highlighter in a physical book you have, no matter where you're, even in the newspaper. And the reason why I'm such an advocate for it is because it's such a great explanation of the student really reading the text. There's no proof that I can read something, you know, with a, when you mark up the text, you are reading it. And I'll show some examples and methodologies to go with writing in a book. I'm right now reading Bernard Weiss's book on Michael Dummett, an analytical philosopher. And this is my copy of the book, and I just have a pencil on me. And with the pencil, I have a little nearby kid's pencil eraser. And if my pencil's not working, sometimes I'll use a pen or a highlighter if I want to. But my preferred method is pencil is because... I can write the pencil markings, and I really can't, you know, write off with a pen or marker. So I always have been using a, a pencil. And again, the reason why you should write in your books with such a heavy text like analytical philosophy like this is because I'm retaining notes and words, what the translator or Weiss is saying about Dummett, and I, I'm learning more about it. And then I'm writing my notes to see if I retained that information about Dummett's analytical philosophy. Some other methodologies include, you know, writing your name, you know, in the book with the date when you purchase the book. And I suggest you should do that on the title page. Under the title page, you know, write your na name that you own the book and as well the date of when you purchased the book. So if this is May, May 18th of 2021, and your name right above it. I, again, this is to show that if your book was to ever be lost or that your book goes into the used nirvana, somebody will pick up your book and that you was an existing writer of this. In a way, the physical book is your private journal because you can highlight or underline or write notes to the side or paid re page references to what you're seeing inside that book. And sure, at the end, the book will become a messy graffiti wall of your own intellectualism, really tackling like a wrestler of the words that the book is throwing at you and way you are understanding each part. And this gets into the silent meditation like writing in a book. So I, I put emphasis on this because normies don't get it. I, I tried to find a criticism for uh, normies being against writing in a book's and I found this Normie Bog from 2012, who doesn't deserve the citation. But she says, Of course, technically, if you do this in a library book, you're a bastard. I have real trouble with stuff that's been highlighted by someone else. I find myself unable to read words that aren't highlighted. I find my eyes bouncing off the page, skipping from one nonsensical phrase to the next, trying to work out why someone has emphasis... Every use of the word fork in the works of Manuel Kent. Why? That pisses me off, and technically, it's vandalism, damaging the property of the commons. Yes, as you can see, this Stacy Becky does not understand that intellectual, strong Chad men write in books. And I have wrote in many library books in the past. I remember being from the ages of 20 to 22 going to my public library, my college library, and picking up Harlan Ennison and Isaac Asimov and Roth, Murray Rothbard, who are all intellectual Jews, you know, and writing about, you know, their interest. And some of these are my favorite reads ever. And what I do is, especially if I'm understanding I have no mouth and I must scream, I have to write where what's happening in the text, you know, or Isaac Asimov to know that something bad happened early on, which makes him a pedophile or Rothbard about what he's really saying. So I, as an intellectual and person using MLA or Chicago style to get that text, knowing which page to get it from. Heck, I'll even suggest getting sticky notes out of all, of all purposes. I suggest 
you know, not only that you're writing in your books, get sticky notes and bookmark each page of where you're going in, you know. So what writing in a book is, is that it's a dialogue between you and the writer. The student you, or the reader, is retaining what you learned from the text. The notes are there as a journal entry, your notes that you wrote, and it can easily be accessed by other students and you, yourself. It will always be there, even if a few years gone by that you wrote that. In a way, you can, you know, ask how have you changed and that is a true intellectual transformation to show how you were going at the text a year ago, and then three years ago, your writing's still there, and the date will remind you of that. We're forgetful human beings. As an artist, you have the right to express yourself using your hands and interacting with the text. I quote-unquote interacting because certainly interaction doesn't act back, does it? Without notes in the book, there is no proof someone has read anything. You could buy a pristine book from 1989 and not write a single word in it. How do I know that person didn't put it on the shelf as the dust collected it and then said, oh yeah, I read that book. There's no proof. And because you own the property of the book, you can do whatever you want to it. It's nothing to do with vandalism. And for books that are borrowed, you are doing them a favor for future readers, for librarians. You're not damaging the book. You are simply a student trying to understand the text. And this is doing them a favor because you are the one that's growing and you're retaining information. You're not making it hard for them. And we're not letting capitalist pigs protect private property. You're taking their property out of their hands and borrowing it for information to retain new epistemological study and that's where we can crash this kind of sad reality of assuming capitalism as a science learning is not a polite mannerism as that stacy becky wants you to believe but a trial and error experience of doing many physical practices it is a true epistemological practice you know what keeps people down is rules to assume you can't write in a book this creates obedient, sad people of echo chamber idiots that want to read a look in the mirror every day and say, I feel good about myself. Is that reading? You know, pristine, bo pristine books may be collectible in a market sense, but in truth, no one can read clean books. No, no, yeah, as I just said. And besides, treating a tool of learning as capital or a product is an evil and wrong. And whether you're in the book industry to sell these books as NFTs or trading cards, then these are no longer books. These are things, as I said before in my time and space lecture, that make up a subculture. Uh, maybe I can reference The Body Keeps the Score, Brain, Mind, and Body in the Healing of Trauma. I'm citing this book is because most people assume that it's cognitive therapy which is making people uh, have disorders. And as long as they think the correct way, therefore, you know, you can be more of an astute learner or obedient to society when really, in all actuality, it's the body more than anything. When you're reading a book aloud, when you're writing in a book, when you're looking at a book, when you're doing these meditative experiences, talking to yourself, this is the way how we learn right? For, for people who are healing as rape victims, they have trauma of sex is because they think of rape and it triggers that PTSD. Well, learning's the same thing. You can't just learn by reading and looking in the mirror and saying, I feel good about myself. You must tackle the text and write in the text and do everything from using a pencil and writing to writing notes to drawing pictures to talking to the book, to reading it aloud, to showing it to friends, putting the book into practice. And that's where the brain can make experiences in mind and how they can learn, really. So, a used book is a used book for a good reason. It's not a collection for some ideological Funko Pop snob. Make use of your books. Show that you learned something from it. This is why I'm telling you, it's okay to write in your books. This is the only reason and know-how that you are becoming an intellectual, that you're ready to cite this book like ammo in a gun to shoot back at your opponent. 
because that is the most important part you can do with writing in your books. So class dismissed, and thanks for listening.